Hello. After uh, showing proof that reflexology is Greek in origin, all right, all right, also Greek in origin, uh, I would like to discuss the custom of barefoot walking. Uh, I think it's a uh, very positive thing to do. And uh, you could consider it easily a passive form of reflexology. In a sense, reflexologists would be out of work if people would uh, still be going barefoot. Now, the story goes that in around 2004, these American doctors were at this uh, Congress in uh, Asia, I think China, and they saw these uh, Chinese people walking on uh, cobbles in cobblestone uh, parks. There were these pathways and they were walking around and they asked him, it was a Dr. John Fisher, if I remember correctly, and they asked, uh, why are you doing this? And they said it was good for health. So to make a long story short, they went back to Oregon and did some research with elderly, a group of elderly people, and they published this research. It got a lot of attention in the media. And the conclusions were that it was, uh, was a good uh, thing to improve uh, blood pressure, uh, pre proprioception, uh, it would advance uh, social life, uh, it helped the elderly uh, not need uh, noon rest, things like this, very positive outcomes. Getting back to Asia, historically we learned from a refle American reflexologist, Kevin Kunz, uh, that there is in Japan they had this technique of takefumi, and they would uh, use a half piece of bamboo and walk on it and in this way uh, give impulses uh, to the body through the feet. But the story goes that Father Joseph Uxter, after reading Heidi Masafret's book on reflexology back in the 70s, started working in uh, Taiwan, started working with people there. He's a Catholic priest. And uh, one day he was sick and couldn't treat any of the people that were coming to him, and he advised him to go to the beach and walk barefoot until he would get better. And more or less, I think this is how all these uh, reflexology parks in Asia began. Now, though the research came out and, you know, it's a good thing, the results, but walking in general, isn't it good? And we know this, uh, especially if we remember the astronauts when they come back from space and because there's no gravity and they don't walk around. And in the past, they would have to be taken off within wheelchairs because they would lose muscle tone, bone density. And the f so in the conclusion, walking in general is good, but barefoot walking is even better. It's interesting that... Uh, Harvard professor by the name of Dan Daniel Lieberman. Um, he has a skeletal biology, biology lab, and he, in 2010 they published a paper uh, in Nature magazine. The title was Foot Strike Patterns and Collision Forces in Habitually Barefoot versus Shod Runners. Plain, simple language. Uh, they have, uh, their research shows that. Uh, it's in. Uh, it's natural for humans to run barefoot, and it's in favor, possibly, for long-distance uh, runners to run barefoot. They will not have that many injuries, and so on. And of course, uh, it uh, helps proprioception, and we already saw this that it helps also the elderly. Uh, but. And a book came out, and the book's name is Earthing, and there's also an Earthing Institute. And what these people are saying is that uh, by walking barefoot, you get grounded, and uh, the earth is like a massive massage table that has, it can uh, eliminate free radicals, inflammation, uh, a lot of impressive stuff. But I would like to speak about a research paper that uh, has, that came out a while back. The title was Earthing the Human Body Influences Physiological Processes. And through in the conclusions of this research, uh, we saw that the influences 
uh, were in many things, but what I found impressive is this quote in the end, it might be the primary factor regulating endocrine and nervous systems. And maybe if you're interested, you should like look into this more. Now getting to Greece, uh, I will begin by long, long ago in the mythology. And uh, there was this uh, a figure, Adeus was his name. He was the son of Poseidon and Gea, Earth. And from her, from Earth, he would get his strength. Uh, Adeus was the king of uh, Ivy. And according to tradition, whoever would uh, pass through his land, uh, Adeus would challenge them to a fight. And he never lost a fight. And uh, this was because he always was uh, grounded. He was always barefoot. And that's where he would get his strength from, from his mother. So uh, this is said uh, metaphorically. Here you see Heracles was advised by goddess Athena. And uh, she told Heracles the only way to beat him is first you have to lift him up. And when he's in the air, then start, uh, then you can beat him. And then he started breaking his ribs and so on and so on. And that's how he beat him. Continuing later on, we will go to ancient Sparta. And uh, Xenophon, uh, in his uh, book about the uh, politia of Sparta, of Lacedemonia, as it is said in Greece, he makes a comparison to Athens and Sparta. And he describes that in Athens, uh, the first, the children are brought up and their feet are very soft because they wear shoes and uh, they make their bodies also soft because they change clothes all the time. On the other hand, the Spartans, uh, instead of making them the, sh the feet soft, uh, Lycurgos, he was the king of Sparta, he made the laws. He said that uh, everyone should be... Uh, going barefoot by law because he believed that if they could uh, get used to that it would be much easier for them to climb up hills and uh, and even go downhill this should remind us of um, injuries that uh, the professor Lieberman was talking about before and uh, Likurgos also believed and that's what Xenophon tells us and if the feet are exercised in this manner they can jump higher, run faster. Uh, so, quite interesting. Um, also, a little later, we have uh, the famous philosopher Diogenes, the Greek. And uh, he too, once, uh, he was talking about Socrates. And he was accusing him that he lived in much luxury because he had wasted uh, money for a little house, a little bench to sit on, and the sandals that he wore. Continuing uh, Philostratos, uh, in his book Gymnastics, we found um, a part on uh, rubbing of the feet, but it also has uh, epistoles, this, these are letters, and letter 18 uh, describes, goes like this, this is how letter 18 begins, we don't know to who it's going, to who it's, uh, the letters intended for, but it goes like this. You have become more fragile, and I'm sure it is the sandal that is tightly around your foot, because this new fashion, uh, using the skin in, uh, for shoes, is very bad, and it bites the soft uh, skin. And he goes on uh, talking about giving examples of ancients that didn't wear shoes and others that did, but in the end of the letter, there's something interesting, and I want to see if it will remind you of anything. He writes, do not let anything be between your feet and the earth. Do not be afraid. The dust will welcome your feet as if it were grass. So I don't know if this reminds you of a passage from uh, somewhere else. As for cobblestone paths and so on, yeah, here you see some pictures of... Uh, Greek uh, influence, and this was uh, done from ancient times, um, from the Mino Minoic years, 8th century BC, um, until, well, until today, actually. It's been lost and gone, but many of these uh, have been found through excavations, and uh, they are preserved. It's uh, very nice. 
So getting to a conclusion, it was practiced, uh, acknowledged that it was healthy to go barefoot. It's interesting that modern scientists have to prove this while uh, the ancients uh, knew it through experience and didn't question it. The only thing of importance is that uh, occasionally we take off our shoes, uh, sense uh, the feeling of freedom, uh, let the earth uh, act as uh, a catalyst maybe, and uh, help the bones uh, move around, 26 bones in the feet, four muscle layers. Uh, when we walk on uneven surfaces, this is very good for us. So take your shoes off and go outside. Thank you.